Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a very special Outlaws of Thunder Junction draft. Today we are joined by one of the best Magic the Gathering limited content creators in the game. He has a highly successful podcast called Limited Level Ups. He has an excellent stream and YouTube channel. Uh, it is Court of Calls, Alex, whatever you know him as, he's excellent, and we're happy to have him back on the channel once more. Welcome to the channel, Alex. Oh, uh, Nikolai, it's so good to be back. It's been a while. It's been too long, so too glad to long. be here. Yeah. So uh, what are your thoughts on the current format, Alex? I know you've been drafting a lot, making a lot of great videos and podcasts and all that stuff. Yeah, I've uh, I've been pretty happy with a, a wide variety of decks, actually. You know, I think a lot of people know that green and black are pretty good, and, and those are like the default things that uh, if, if those are opening your draft, great, you can draft those. But I've had a lot of success with like Grixis Crimes, Black White, Grindy stuff. has been something I've been in a lot. So really just mm -hmm. uh, a wide wide range of decks I've been happy drafting. Yeah, I know that you said like you've been playing Black White a lot, and I know that's a deck that's was a breakout performer at the Pro Tour, and honestly is one I haven't had much experience with. Could you elaborate a little bit on what you like about that deck? So if we see some of the cards, maybe we can draft it. Oh, yeah. So one of the things is like, I think you can draft it a lot of different ways. I, I do think it can be like, you know, a black green, I'm uh, sorry, a black white control deck. Maybe you're using Bandit's Hall, like the Manolith that uh, draws cards to really grind out some value. You just got a lot of removal spells. Or you maybe are doing a little bit more of the sacrificing stuff because you've got the the good black white uncommon, the, the Lawbringer, sacrificing something to kill something. Like th th that kind of all ties that into a package. You can also do like a black white flyer deck, which is something that's been kind of uh, oh. interesting. Yeah, we are like, it actually uses some kind of like late cards that you don't really need to pick early, like the the Black Snag Buzzard, uh, the Rooftop mm. Assassin, the, even like the Three Two Griffin. So like it's like a bit of attritiony, a bit of like gum up the ground and kill their big stuff, so you don't get raced back and kill them in the air. That's kind of the idea. Yeah, one of the ways you can tell that a card is a late pick is if people who've drafted the format a ton to still refer to it as the 3 2 Griffin. Yeah, I exactly. Also, <laughs> I, I was like, what is it called? Is it called like Lawless Griffin or something like that? It's like something like that. Yeah. Something like I I can I know the artwork, but like the name of it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's just the 3 2 Griffin that I've played like a couple of times and usually does okay. But it's nice that every card kind of has a home um in the format. I uh you also mentioned Grix's Crimes. I mean, I think the green decks are pretty self-explanatory. Um, they, they tend to just have lots of good cards. Um, but you said Grix's Crimes. When you say Grix's Crimes, does that mean that you're actually playing all three of those colors? Or is it just like the subsets of those two color pairs, like blue-red, blue-black, and black-red? Yeah, it's generally base blue-black. I think just mm -hmm. the you know, the black removal, the blue card advantage um, with... Some maybe you splash some red removal, uh, like the explosive derailment, or even like thunder salvo. That's another card you get pretty late. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do sometimes splash like at knife point if I've got a lot of removal. That that card's pretty good to just mm -hmm. get a bunch of value when you're casting removal spells. So, yeah, it's flexible, but I, I definitely find myself in blue black base a little more often than not when I'm doing that. Yeah, I love the blue black base. I think, uh, not this in the, the campaign is really fun and, uh, I think Lazav is really good as well. I like the first time someone played Lazav against me, I was like, wait a second, this thing just grows <laughs> so fast. Yeah. And then it, it just does. turns into like a six five flyer randomly, and you're like, oh, I'm just dead. Yep. But, uh, just dead. Yeah. One last question before we dive into the draft. Uh, I know a lot of people have asked me, and so I'm sure you get the question a lot as well about how the format plays out with all of the rares running around. Mm. There's it feels like there's more good rares in this set, maybe, than there were in Karlov Manor. So it like becomes more apparent when you get like multiple in a pack. What are your general thoughts on maybe the rare situation or dealing with the rares or how you adjust your gameplay uh, to make sure you are okay against them? Yeah, for sure. And I think I think you're totally right that if you compare it to uh, murders, it you know it's not even like a play booster thing. I've gotten the question is like, oh, do you think this is like the new era of play boosters mm -hmm. where we're just gonna face rares all the time? I don't think so because murders wasn't didn't feel like that yeah. to me. This set is a little bit more every a lot of the rares are hits. So you're like, yep, I, I want to draft that one. And that one's a great one. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've just found that as long as you've got like five or six, maybe not even six, but like four or five removal spells, you're really prioritizing them in the draft. I'm somebody who doesn't necessarily prioritize removal as highly as some other mm -hmm. players. I really like taking the good creatures, but that was something I had to shift for this set. I had to be like, no, 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 you, you need to really take the removal spells. And you know what? It's nice that the, the, a lot of the rares, not all of them, but most of the rares, they can get answered by removal. It's not like, yeah. wow, they played that and that thing just drew them a million cards and I can never come back, you know? Yeah. So 
that that's been kind of my uh my go-to and of course you know like i always say it, it helps to have a proactive plan of some sort to have a, like good deck good deck building uh can definitely combat bombs if you just got a good curve you don't even need to be proactive you can be a controlling deck but just make sure your fundamentals are in place good curve have enough interaction uh a well-tuned deck can definitely beat bombs if just just by the virtue of how magic the gathering plays out yeah 100 percent. let's join in the queue i think that the the bombs thing is also funny because uh i find that whenever i have them in my deck i'm like oh this thing dies a lot and but whenever it's on the <laughs> other side and it, i don't kill it it's like oh i wasn't able to kill their rare but it's like it's yep. almost like the the bias where it feels so much worse to get beaten by a rare than you kind of feel when you be beat somebody else using a rare that you almost like don't notice the times. Totally. Like, yeah, I played this card on turn three and then I won the game easily. And now it's like uh, the it's easy to just like only have that negative thought in your head like, oh, I always get beaten by rares. Yes, exactly. You know, you, you know, if you're playing the format a decent amount, even if you only do, you know, five, six, seven drafts, let's just say you should approximately have as many good rares as your opponent you know, face your opponents have good rares but mm -hmm. yeah that that uh, kind of mental framing can kind of uh, your, your brain tells you that you lose to them more than you win to them you know <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> or win <with> them. <laughs> why am i so unlucky that type yeah of thing. exactly <laughs> excellent okie doke so we open our first pack and let's just just walk me through it what what, what catches sure. your eye where does your eye go do you start from the bottom and go to the top like a psychopath i sometimes do that or <laughs> where do you go well, first <laughs> My eye definitely in this format goes to the, the top left corner, and I go, is there anything good there? And Tywa Keen's, like, not, not exactly a rare I want to first pick. It kind of combos with the Desert Lands, where you can, like, mm -hmm. fireball them out in the late game, but I, I don't think I would take that here. The, yeah. the two cards that stand out, definitely the Uncommons here. The Armadillo, excellent. That's just one of the top Uncommons in my mind. And uh, Tyrant Scorn, too. I think Tyrant Scorn is actually kind of underrated. I don't know. Maybe yeah. people just, like, haven't played with the card, or, you know, these... The cards are too too washed out to uh to know what the cards do sometimes. <laughs> you know, like I mean yeah. I have trouble being like, what is that? You know? Um but then the land, the land certainly, uh, black green land you especially. Would, you would first pick the land. Well probably not, not this but like spot, first pick. Yeah. yeah. If the armadillo and tyrant squirn weren't here, I would. Um oh, even over like Blood Hustler or Mystical Tether. Interesting. So you like the armadillo first, I assume. Yes, yeah, so that's just monocolored in the best yeah. color. Um, the and, reasoning for the gulch, by the way, is because it is both black and green, and mm -hmm. not only those the best colors, but that's where you have the good common desert payoffs and deserts do. And oh, that makes a lot of sense. Also, yeah. like I assume that green decks might be more likely to want to splash, so even if they're not yep. playing black, they can use it. And black decks, if they're like a blue black deck, might care about the crime land in general. That's exactly. really interesting. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I guess that's why the green black one's really good. I was thinking, so you would have second picked a, you would have first picked a gold card like the blue black card, even if this fine woods armadillo was like some dud dud uncommon. Yeah, I would I would think about it for a bit and maybe take the uh, the tether or the there's the green blade paladin. Like they're all kind of close. Different day might take something different, but I do think that mm -hmm. uh, splashing is easy enough that I would just take the gold card. Okay, so now we have another pack here. There's a pack to sure shot, nimble brigand, uh, mystical tether. What do you want to take here? Yeah, or well, I would take the better version of Mystical Tether, which is just Journey to Nowhere. I think <laughs> right. It's so washed yeah. out, I didn't see it. No. <laughs> exactly, right? Oh. Look, we, ju we just talked about this. It ha I mean, it happens to I draft so much, and it happens to me still, too. So, yeah, yeah, great removal spell. I was talking about removal's great, and Journey's an excellent one, and a splashable one. Wow. Okay, so now we see a third pick three steps ahead. Ooh. Um, I love this card. I don't know yeah, why other people... I think I feel like I always take this card when I see it and I get past it a decent amount. And so then I'm always like, wait, am I missing something? Is this card not just like unbelievable? <laughs> no, you're not. I, think, I copied a Spinewoods Armadillo with it once, I'm pretty sure. It's like, it's pretty next level. That um, sounds great. <laughs> so there's three steps ahead. There's, I mean, I don't think anything else comes close. Um, I guess no. it's Naturalist as a green yeah, card. Yeah, I, I really like uh, the Bloodseeker. That card's really good too. The 2-2 two -two yeah. lifelink creature that... You know, commits crimes, mills yourself if you're black, green, recursion. But I totally agree with you. I, th I think that the rare is great, and we should just take that here. Yeah, there's also another blue-white gold card, an emergent haunting, so we could be set up for a blue-white deck, potentially. Yeah, totally. Um, what are your thoughts on, uh, like, green is a great color, but it gets contested pretty heavily. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on, like, when you should get into the color knowing that it's going to be contested? Because that's something that I sometimes am like, okay, well, there's, like, an okay green card, but if I'm not going to get any more green, it's really hard to to, to get in. Yeah, it's a great question. My uh, my answer to that has kind of been don't move in for the good commons. You kind of want to make sure you have rares or uncommons. Mm -hmm. Like I, I I had this 
trail of drafts where I was just like, oh, I've got a throw from the saddle and a hard bristle bandit. But then the green just wasn't coming and I was getting into it for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. I think as long as you've got like three, four good uncommons rares, I'm happy to do it. But, you know, in this draft right now, we're fourth pick. Nothing great in green, so I'm not too tied to yeah. the armadillo. There's gem. I think it, I did say it was wanted Griffin. I'm pretty sure, but yeah, there's yes. Griffin. There's phantom interference. What do you want to take in this pack? Ah, uh, pylons. I love conduit pylons. I think that. Whoa, card, that yeah. wasn't even on my radar. Wow, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, oh so my this gosh. Is super flexible in a lot of ways. I mean, the surveil is good. The just having a five color fixer, having a desert for you know various reasons that want it. I, I take the first pylons pretty highly. Nice. I think blue white's open. By the way, we've seen like yeah. every blue white card under the sun. Yeah, we I can like Wrangler of the Damned. Um, I do. I like. Yeah, I like Wrangler. Would you too. rather have Phantom Interference over it in this spot, it, or it's tough? I think I would probably take the Wrangler here, but uh, yeah. I, I do like me an Interference. And you know what? I think we could either be like a blue white deck. Maybe we end up like a a green, like a Bant splashy deck. And I think that Wrangler is you know probably a better blue card in in that kind of deck than Phantom Interference. So mm-hmm. yeah. I love copying it with three steps ahead too. Yes, I, that's for oh, that's sweet. Yeah. I had a deck yesterday where I had the um the shapeshifter guy that can copy things, and so I would like Ooh. flash in Wrangler end of turn, play shapeshifter, and then just start making two two twos a turn. It was like, okay, this isn't re- feeling really fair right now. Nice. That's sick. Yeah. I also like that you chose conduit pylons because that was like the only card in that pack that I hadn't even considered. <laughs> it's always <laughs> good mean, to get another perspective on things. Exactly. I was like, okay. I was like, okay, Absolutely. okay. I like medic here, I think. Just a good yes. two drop for the offensive. I think Medic is like one of the cards that um it, it's funny because anytime there's a card that like resembles an old card that I liked, so this is like Feral Prowler, which was a green card from Hour mm-hmm. of Devastation, but it has lifelink now and it's in a different color. But I just love this sort of effect where it's like, okay, it's a little speed bump. You always love to play it on turn two. You don't care if it dies. It's just like such a satisfying card to play. Yeah, I'm a I'm a fan of Medic. Um I and it's funny, you are like, oh, it's like an old card. And when you said that, I was like, Oh yeah, it's like the one three lifelink from M nineteen. No, you went a different direction, but it's just those two cards fused together. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Oh my gosh. Now there's a oh, Frontier Seeker and nice. a Phantom Interference and a Festering yeah. Gulch. We could have gotten in seventh pick. Our it's land. The power. <laughs> the power. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oof. I mean, kind of an interesting pick, because this is more of an instant speed card, but this is more of like I think probably just a better card, maybe in a vacuum. Yeah, I think so. I, I think I wouldn't want to get too married to like the, oh, let's go all in, in speed right stuff right now. Um, You know, maybe if the gems come back, we'll be happy with that. But yeah, like you said, I think Frontier Seeker is just a better card. Um, Good in mm-hmm. any deck. You know, it's better if you have mounts, but if it just draws you a planes and it will so much of the time, it's good. Yeah, I agree. It's nice to get just have a proactive two drop as well. Okie doke. <laughs> the, the red black pack. Yeah, this is, the, this is the one. There's a I guess a townsfolk we can take. Yeah, I don't hate this card. Totally serviceable. We could also just like take a Skullduggery or something in case we open a crazy black rare and want to go there. Yeah, I think I would just take the the townsfolk still. It's good enough. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on like like taking all of like the cards of a certain color so that you'll have a better pack too? Is that something you consider when making picks? Not really. I think that one people on average don't pay attention enough to that. Like so that to mm-hmm. to be like, oh well, I'll, I need to move out of this. But two. I think, well, look, another black green line. <laughs> it's the um, same one. It's the same one. But, but two, I think that uh, we, like, in the world of play boosters, it's just, you know, packs are a little bit more scattered. So it's hard to really, like, do that consistently, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, the Stop Cold, Daring Thunder Thief. Yeah. I, I like me a Stop Cold just fine. Yeah. I think the card's okay. Yeah. It's uh, definitely one that I've been pretty happy with. Flash speed plays well in blue white. Ooh, Mesa. Ooh, Mesa. Yeah, also, I mean, I, exactly. Me too. I, tenth, I said the exact same thing. <laughs> tenth pick Hillsburg route. Like, okay. Yeah. Baron Bertram Greywater coming around. Yeah, the red is kind of like, um, you know, I said you, know, you don't want to get into like green because sometimes it's not open unless you have the uncommons and rares. I, I feel for red, which I do think is the worst color, like you need really good reasons. Like even a Hellsper Brute wheeling isn't like, oh, I should move into red. If you open a red bomb, it's like, okay, I can do this. Not everybody, nobody's at the table is going to be like, oh no, like f- four people are fighting over it. But I don't think, it's not a signal for me to move in or anything. Yeah. I I've, I think like, because we passed a couple of gem lightfoots, I think there will be another blue white drafter in the pod that maybe takes some I think of the cards so too. we want. Oh, nice. Um, but that should be fine. I think we just get this bluffs here now. Yeah, bluffs looks good. I mean, prickly pear still in the pack. I mean, I guess that's what you're saying. Other people have maybe picked up on um, red not being a place they want to end up. 
Yeah, I would uh I would just prefer for people to take the red cards honestly and be like, yeah, you like you would have them. <laughs> you yeah. Know? I feel like um one thing I've always noticed about your drafting style is you find your way into like the quote unquote like best archetypes a lot more because like you mm. like prioritize like meet like cards that I would maybe not think of as good because you realize that like, oh, if I end up in these colors, I'll have a lot of good cards. So that's yeah. something that I I've, I've noticed that you do. Like, oh, you'll you're willing to take like um like the five four spinewoods palette and a little bit higher than I would or things like that to like get into green or things like that, which I think is always an interesting like like successful strategy because the power level is similar overall when you are in a medium version of the best deck versus a great version of the worst decks. Right. Um, but it's always something I've noticed about your style a little bit. No, it's very observant. You're very it's very very true. <laughs> um I have a follow up question about that, but first what do you think we take out of this pack? Yeah, it's kind of a Tough one. There's not a lot that we really want exactly for like, there's no white cards we want. I would probably just take one of the green cards, like either Dance or Hard Bristle Bandit. Probably land on oh, Hard okay. Bristle Bandit. Yeah, okay. like Eric gets a little by. I'll play sometimes, but I don't think we need to take it here. I'd rather just maybe we do get past some awesome green card and we can play mostly white with some green cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, So here, I mean, we're going to see a lot of red cards, I think, just over the course of the draft. The best card is maybe Aloe Alchemist. There's a Geyser Drake that we could maybe play. Mm -hmm. Steer Clear. This pack is kind of bad <laughs> for our colors. Well, I think I would take the Sharpshooter here because I think that card mm. is really, really good. And we have Fixing and we have Red Fixing. And I think, I'm not going to say no matter where we end up, we're going to play it. But this is a card I've splashed quite a bit and pretty, right. been pretty happy about it. So, yeah, I would take that here. I guess a Braided Bluffs really does help with that in the Mesa. And I yes. guess the, the Conduit Pylons as well. Right, That's exactly. Pylons is helpful. So just to circle maybe, back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, circle, yeah, go ahead. Circling back. So you like having these, like, you're willing to play, like, a medium version of a, like, really good archetype versus always, like, like trying to have, like, the best version of, like, whatever, like, quote, unquote, maybe is most open, I feel like, a mm -hmm. lot of the time. Like, not that you won't yep. draft what's open, but as just a question, do you think that the, like, is that, like, a consistency thing? Is that just because you like playing the best cards? Is that, like, so you can get practice with them? What's the kind of logic behind going for, the, like, the solid version of the best decks in the format a lot of the time? It's absolutely a consistency thing. I just want to make sure that, like, over the long term, I'm just winning as much as I can. I think that's the best way to do it. You know, like, sometimes I'll have draft videos and people will be like, oh, like, Red White, for example, in this format, it was so open. It's like, yeah, but I don't really care because, like, a good Red White deck is, like, all, not even that good, you know? <laughs> so mm -hmm. so yeah. I just rather draft the good green cards. Now, our rare here, Collector's Cage. That card's busted. Uh, we should busted. definitely take that one. That card <laughs> okay. is amazing. Yeah. That have you have you played with this one before? I have not played with it. I've played against oh. it and I blew my opponent out, actually, because Oh, they, did you? <laughs> they played it and I happened to have explosive derailment, so I just like killed it. <laughs> it okay, well, very, very lucky for you, but it it's a it's a free spell, basically. Like two mana, look at the top <laughs> five, take a free spell, and just uh, grind grind <laughs> you out of the game. I also and... thought this was a, like I did not realize this was a white card for some reason. I thought it was like a colorless artifact. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. <laughs> I, I was I was totally zoned out. I forgot we were even playing a white deck. I was like, oh wait, we That's have funny. white cards. <laughs> I was like, okay um this deck's also great there's nexus shepherd's yeah. amazing um i kind of like both these blue cards yeah these but i think it's between shepherd and nexus for me and both of them are really close um do we think that's like goes to the grave let's take the nexus i think that's like a good late game inevitability engine we're, we're yeah. looking like a slower deck yeah we are looking like a slower deck we're also f figuring out our, all our colors wow love oh, nice. prairie dog there's also yeah. a mystical tether yeah what is this your... is where i let's take yeah. good what are your thoughts on Raven of Felums? I assume we're taking Prairie Dog here, right? Yeah, I would. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I I, I I would do a little look and see how much removal do I have because I probably want like you know an average of two, one to two removal spells per pack, and uh, like I think good enough to take the Prairie Dog, which I think is better than Tether. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Raven of Felum? And people always are like, "Why are you passing this card? I love Raven." And I've <laughs> never played it or even really considered playing it. Uh I think if you have enough removal it's pretty good like you want removal to trigger it a lot because if, if you can make it like a two power flyer that gains a little bit of life every other turn that's pretty good but uh you just need to make sure you're triggering it every turn mm -hmm. hindering light forsaken flats yeah I, I like that you highlighted the gardener because i love that card <laughs> um yeah. i'm a yeah i mean the flats is interesting a white desert but we don't have any black cards right now we not to say we couldn't I, I really think that uh, Gardener is, is a, card, it's a, a card I draft a lot because it just kind of holds your deck together when you're like yeah. two colors and splashing something. Um, 
Much yeah. better than cards like that usually, because that two life really gives you that buffer to be like, I'm okay not blocking with my three mana two two. Yeah, I agree. I've been just like I whenever I've played it, I've been like, oh, this just kind of does what I want it to do. Yeah, exactly. Now there's another Mesa, I think, or a holy Take the cow. holy cow here. Yeah, yeah, I like holy cow a lot. Just and it also plays nicely because we have Prairie Dog and we have Wrangler of the Damned too. Yeah, nice. And it gains us yeah, some so, life. It's a nice life buffer. Right now, I think we're just like. We're just white, right? Like we'll figure yeah. out what what we're doing after that. We could be blue. I think blue is our most likely candidate here. But um, yeah, and then we're happy to just take an area. It's a little by or, or a key keeper here. I'm done with either one. Yeah, I I think I would lean lullaby because we are at that you know just just under the amount of removal for par in this part of the draft that I would like mm -hmm. to see. Yeah, lullaby is pretty good too. Okay, wheeling tumbleweeds. Mm, that's good. Lively Dirge is a massive overperformer. I actually played yeah. it, which I didn't expect to. But to be fair, I played it in a deck that I had like five reanimation spells and a Bonnie Paul to go get. And so oh, like, nice. I was like, actually, I played two of them because it was like, OK, this is like now I have like Bonnie Paul every game. That's funny. Yeah, it, it does go up in value when you've got some great stuff to get. Yeah. Okie doke. There's an at knife point Tumbleweed Rising. Have you ever played Tumbleweed Rising? Uh, Yeah, quite a bit, actually. I think as yeah. long as you've got like five, six, four, four more power creatures or ways to pump your creatures. Um, yeah, I like the card. I would take it over Steer Clear here, for, oh, for example. Oh, okay, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Steer Clear doesn't seem good unless we have mounts. Nice. Oh, wow. Ooh, the form nice. of Posse. A and also the, another Tumbleweed. Like, this is a good pack for us. I'm definitely just going to take the, the white card, but wow. Yeah, I think form of Posse is really good. I really like that card. I've been very Me too. impressed. Yes, I made like five two twos. Oh my gosh, what? Wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean, we could take it. I think I would take, yeah, throw here. Wild. I, uh, yeah, this is one of the best commons in the set, just so viewers know why we're so shocked to see that. That's that's the noise. Wait, the noise you just made is the noise that the horse is making, throwing that guy off. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, take the fall. I like take the fall. Yeah. So I think we're not black and we're not red. That's that's something we can say. <laughs> we're not, oh, we're no. not red. We have skewer and longhorn. I guess yeah, it doesn't matter. That's true. Right no, no, you're you're actually right. I actually forgot about the the, the longhorn. <laughs> you forgot about the skewer because it's washed out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, totally. <laughs> oh, there's Stingerback Terror. Um, Heard great. Yeah, I've never played it. I've always I think I've passed it a lot of times because I think every time my opponent played it, I happened to have a kill spell, which made me undervalue it. <laughs> You know, uh, with the Gardener, with the fixing we have, with the Abrada Bluffs, I think we should just take it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can play it. Yeah. Yeah, we for have, sure. We have Pylons, Mirage Mesa, and Abrada Bluffs, just three free red sources, plus an Oasis Gardener. Um, and I think at this point, with the green that we have, we should probably just settle on the green-white base, because all five of our, four of our five green cards are really good. Um, and, and even if we don't see that many green cards this pack, I think we're going to be fine. Oh wow! This card's wild. That so card how deep do you want to go? <laughs> I don't think I can. I don't know how to play that. How we would ever play that card? We have like no no black fixing. But this card decimated me before. Oh my gosh! It's very it even, good. It's even worse because I played against it in best of three, and so like the entire time I was like, oh no! And like I was like trying to like play around it, but you can't really. I guess we could take Alchemist or Trained Erinx. Yeah. What's our uh, two drops all looking like? Just it's There's okay. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think that Alchemist is the better one of the two, so I would just take that. Yeah, I like that. Tumbleweed Rising is more of a three. This is more of a removal spell. We have a good number of... This is more of a three. Oh, oh. baby! I love Bruise Tarl! Let's nice. go! For some reason, I always say Ranger instead of Rancher, but this card's <laughs> like my jam. I love this guy. Do you know what Bruce Tarl plays really well with? Um, hmm. What does he play really well with? Um, ooh, I feel like this is a trick question um no i have no idea oh no with the it's, holy cow holy cow yes yeah, yeah exactly our, <laughs> yes. Two, our two copies of holy cow <laughs> oh we're geniuses for drafting holy cow nice. Bruce tarl is such a beating uh if we weren't taking that i'd maybe take uh naturalist yeah i think so too i did have a sweet gold rush deck one time where i had like the gold vein hydra and then i had two Ooh. gold rushes so i did 15 damage to my opponent one turn because i had like three treasures lying around yeah, I got um, combo killed the other day, actually. My opponent had Jolene and just, like, attacked and cast two of those plus some other trick. I was like, all right, yeah, yeah. GG. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Ty, Joaquin, I think red-white is so open right now. <laughs> Nobody's playing red-white for sure. There's another holy cow, though. Thunder Salvo, I guess. Big horn. What do you want to take Yeah, here? 
I think just another holy cow. Um, that looks pretty good. I I also like Sentinel. Um, that card is pretty strong. I feel like we could, just, we could just be like a red white deck. Like we don't have to get fancy with green. I don't think it's true. Yeah, but our our red cards are yeah they're they're good enough. You're right. I I think the smart thing to do is just keep taking white cards for as long as we can. Make that yeah. decision later. But yeah. Later, as in pack three, pick five. No, there's a scorching shot. There's a dance of the tumbleweeds. Um, it's a pretty interesting spot here. I mean, I think we have really good green cards, so I don't mind. Yeah. So, colors. so now I would just take dance, and now I would say we're probably going to be green, white, splash, two or three red cards. That's that's probably what we want to do. Okay. Like, yeah. Scorching shot in this deck is is going to be a little hard to cast, anyways, right? Like red, red. We're not casting that for a while. Yeah, but do you really um, so. want to cast it in the early turns? That's what, I've heard people say that a lot, which is one of the reasons why I immediately have that thought come to my mind. But a lot of I've heard people say, "Oh, it's hard to cast." But like by the time you want to cast your deal five, don't you usually have like it's like turn four or five, and you want like when you want to cast it when you well off it. I think a lot of the value of a cheap removal spell is being able to kill their two drop if you don't have a two drop, right? So right. you're right; it's not always important, but you kind of nix out that that value of that kind of card. Right. So mm -hmm. I, it's not like a man, I shouldn't put that card in my deck or anything, but it's not it's not going to be as good as you might think it's going to be if you don't have that many red sources. Yeah, that makes sense. OK, so there's another medic. Um, yeah, medic, great. I always get this one confused with the blue white one because the mana symbols are so me too. Yep, yep. Me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's playing the highest. I like this card, actually, not for our deck, but I do think that card's good. Yeah, no, I totally agree. OK, cool. So this is kind of a. Wow, now there's back for more. Where yeah. <laughs> there's Outlaw Medic again. Stagecoach Security. Highway robbery. Yeah, I think our deck probably just wants an outlaw medic. Just go up the ground a little bit more. Yeah, we're gonna just hit them with some giant tumbleweeds. I've got a feeling. Yeah, even just like outlaw medic into the holy cow, like three medics and four holy cows, like that's that's a pretty How are they ever gonna kill us? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're gonna have so much life. Yeah, um, Wingsmith. I I was embarrassingly high on this card. Luckily, I never said that in a public forum. But when I first saw this, I was like, <laughs> "It's a three mana two four flyer." So good, yeah. But not casting a spell is a big cost. You know, the boombox there. I I have uh, one time I've seen it used to good success is with uh, Eartha Joe, the the two the red white uncommon, and she doubles. She actually doubles it, so you can blow up two lands oh, with two I... creatures. Do you want Rising or Griffin here? Ah, I don't think it's going to matter too much. I would probably yeah. take the Griffin, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, you with Eartha Joe. Eartha Joe is the... Um, which one's that one again? It's that, sorry, the red, white, golden common that like, she's like a 2-4 that comes Oh, that double triggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double yeah, triggers, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Ooh, this is where I take the Sentinel. Sentinel is going to be pretty good here, I think. Oh, nice. I haven't played with Sentinel yet. Yeah, I it's uh <laughs> I passed out on the the combat trick. No. No oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, doke. Our deck has so many cards in it. <laughs> we have every yeah. card in the main deck right now. I mean, we're going to cut gonna, the blue ones. We're going to need some cuts here. Gosh. This is a wild draft. <laughs> a lonely quick draw in the sideboard. <laughs> so when it comes to building this sort of deck, I mean, I assume we're cutting all the blue cards right off the bat, even though we have three steps ahead. I think so, too. Yeah, we're just not going to be. Yeah, not, not going to have enough blue mana for the three steps ahead, even though and we now... do have a few, a few incidental multicolor sources. And now the cuts can commence. I I also think we're probably going to be splashing red, so we're probably not going to want the Wolverine off the splash or the mm -hmm. Reckless Lackey off the splash. Yes, definitely. T Terror is still a splash because we can plot it, which is nice. Um. We could splash skewer if we wanted. Do you generally do a count of your removal spells at this point? Yes, I was just thinking that because I think that what red is going to offer us some removal that we were lacking a little bit. I mean, we've got three removal spells in our base colors. That's not too bad. But um, I think skewer is a tough one because our deck's not going to be dealing damage all that often. So a three mana deal three is just like not that exciting at sorcery speed. The the um the sh sharpshooter I would be interested in that so I think that one's probably going to make the cut but we can't play too many red cards so 
Yeah, you don't think we're... I mean, with four holy cows, I feel like we can do damage almost at will. But that's maybe my... That's true. No, no, you're, you're actually right. I, I forgot about the holy cows. I don't know how. There's four of them. But... <laughs> that's a little times four right there. If this was a paper draft, you'd just see a giant stack exactly. of holy cows. No, you, you make a good point. Flyers play much, much better with, with Skewer um, than some normal green-white deck that attacks on the ground. So, yeah. No, I think you're right. I think we can definitely consider it if we've got the sources. That's always the thing. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. that's the thing holding us back. We have two Dance of the Tumbleweeds as like two, three, four, five sources without even including any of our supplement sources like a Hard Bristle Bandit or an Oasis Gardener. Um, we have so much life gain in this deck. My goodness. Life link. Yeah. Great. Life link. Life That's gain. what you want. Yeah. Um, the Aggro Dex Nightmare. Um, life gain. <laughs> life gain. Um, so my thought now on cuts is maybe cutting like a couple of our just clunkers like vengeful townsfolk because we have so many three drops already um yes i agree on those for sure um cutting i mean this card's really good with dance <laughs> i saw this it's very true. funny debate when it was like if you already have a seven seven tumbleweed rising is <laughs> is really good i think that was on uh lords of limited or something but uh <laughs> it was like oh we already have a seven seven so tumbleweed rising makes a second seven seven and that's when we really get started <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, I mean, seven seven. Look, seven sevens get double blocked, right? Like you, yeah. you sometimes want another one. Like <laughs> I think Ben was like, uh, but if you have two seven sevens, one can play offense, one can play defense. <laughs> yeah, you basically give it vigilance, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we have. Is there like a two drop count that you're aiming for? Like I, I seem to remember like you saying at one point, like, oh, you don't want too many two drops because you still need stuff to do in the late game. But that might have been somewhere else. Yeah, I, I don't. That. For sure. No, that that's definitely something that sounds like I, I've said that for this format. I think, you know, as long as you like if all your two drops are premium, I, mm -hmm. I you know, you can play them all. Sure. Like I will play as many prairie dogs as I can get. Yeah. But, um, you know, my number for this format is probably about six. You know, if I can have six, two drops and we've got about that. So yeah, three, four, five, six, we have seven. But and then the collector's cage, which is not really. Yeah. A two drop, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, this deck is looking pretty. We could cut the tumbleweed rising. That's like a candidate. Yes. I agree with that. Also, I think the Wanted Griffin can kind of just go there. We've yeah. got four Holy Cows. Don't really need that, yeah, you know. We're not playing the famous Black White Aggro deck, so we don't really right. have to go too hard on that one. There's a Red Bedrock. Red Rock. I literally have never played this card. So <laughs> my actual, the only time I've seen this card in play was when my opponent drew so many cards with it that they decked themselves. Nice. Um, <laughs> I was like, they had they mind slavered me and then conceded on their next turn, and I was like, wait, why? You just mind slavered me, and then I realized that they'd ran out of cards in deck, so they hadn't even conceded. Awesome. Um. So. We have two more cuts to make. Do you want to play 17 lands in this deck? I feel like this is probably a 17 or... Yeah, I think I for know. sure. And, and you know, I think I actually would go back to cutting the skewer just because we yeah. do have, like, four red cards is a lot, even if with yeah. our fixing. You know, you yeah. just want to make sure you can cast your your cards in your opening hand consistently. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, one last cut to make. We can cut the Red Rock Sentinel. That's actually, maybe one of the Medics. I think one L on Medic can probably go. Yeah. I'm excited to see how Red Rock Sentinel does. I feel like it's kind of nice to give us a little bit of late game insurance. Sure. Now we have yeah. like Nexus of Becoming, Red Rock Sentinel, and like like a couple of just big flyers and stuff to kind of give us a late game edge, the Prairie Dog, Collector's Cage. Yeah. Um, no, I think we're in a good yeah. spot. And then and for then the our... mana, I don't think we want yeah. three mountains. I mean, no. We can maybe get away with no mountains, honestly. I would also vote no mountains here. We've got a lot of fixtures in our spell slots, so... And we have more white, so we can go. This gives us eight white sources, seven green sources, not including this. It's like nine white sources, eight green sources, and then pylons. And uh, then one, two, three, like four, five, six, seven. Or kind of like, I kind of count these as like a half. So it's like six yeah. red sources. Seems pretty good. Are they, yeah, that looks good this to me. Is, seems like a nice deck. Um, before you head out, I do want to remind folks to check out Alex on YouTube at Limited Level Ups. He's got a great YouTube channel there where he posts a video version of his podcast as well as other things. And you can find the podcast Limited Level Ups anywhere you listen to podcasts. It's always great to hear Alex's thoughts on formats and because uh, he's a really good drafter. And then he also streams on Twitch. And so you can check out his Twitch stream. He's a excellent streamer who uh, is really mm -hmm. good at explaining his plays and answering questions and things like that. Um, you can also follow him on Twitter and uh, hear what he's up to and all that stuff. I'll link all of that in the description below. But before you head out, Alex, are there any parting thoughts you've got? No, I just want to say, you know, I appreciate the shout outs. Appreciate you having me on again. Hope to do this again in the future. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, if, if anybody is still, 
you know, interested in getting better at this format. I, I honestly think that a lot of the stuff we covered today is, is something that I would, you know, tell to tell, tell somebody who's like, oh, I'm kind of struggling. Like, you know, what we talked about with the rares, what we talked about about getting mm -hmm. into the better colors. Um, that's that's all stuff I think is really pertinent to being at this format. Yeah, 100 percent. I almost certainly would have ended up playing red, white, but I think that this green deck actually has a lot of good stuff going for it. So for sure, I'm really excited to play out, out in the games. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for the portion with Alex. Uh, say goodbye to him, viewers, but uh, I'll see you folks in the games. Before I get to the games, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support the Nikolai Bolas channel at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. It is thanks to Patreon support that I'm able to make as many videos as I do. And I really do appreciate everybody who contributes towards the success of the channel. If you're enjoying my videos and would like to support my content directly, Patreon is the best way to do so. And you gain access to some cool perks along the way, such as access to my card by card tier list for each set and other cool benefits. Special shout out to those patrons who support my channel at the credits level. I really do appreciate it. But without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round one. We're keeping this one. This is a great hand. Green mana. We can go Frontier Seeker into Aloe, or Aloe just on turn two, just start the pressuring. I think I like the idea of going Aloe Alchemist. Hits like a truck. A very small cowboy hat wearing truck. But yeah, huge shout out to Alex for coming on as a guest. He's one of my favorite guests. He's uh, a guest that I've had over the course of the channel's history um, many times. I haven't had him on as much recently as I would like. Here they have two mana up. I'm just going to play my Holy Cow because I don't want to get counterspelled for no reason. Um, but he's a really good content creator and his channel is excellent. And I think uh, if you do check out his YouTube channel, his Twitch stream, you, you will learn a lot and to get a lot better. So that's something that I do really encourage folks to do. Okay, so I would like to play this. So if I play this and this and I draw a land, I can cast that next turn. I think I'll gamble. It's one less point of power in play for if I do decide to do something else. But I could also draw like Bruised Tarl and then this is my red source. Oh my gosh, they are, they are psychopaths. What are they doing? They haven't cast a spell. Any of combat? Yep, so... Now we get to do the play we wanted. Um, so we make a 3-3 Holy Cow. That seems like the best. Not that the 3-3 Medic wouldn't be good, but I think this is going to be better because they're going to play this, play this. And we just want to have f Flyings. I wouldn't really like to draw that. Nope. So they're going to be at 10, but we'll have two, two turn clock in the air. And we're drawing an extra card every turn. Okay. Nexus is pretty awesome. And the ground is officially closed. <laughs> oh, we are no longer open for business on the ground game. I'm so confused. I'm I'm so confused. I have a 3-3. It's right there. Opponent, please. Please don't do this to me. Uh, okay, we'll play this guy first. See what we see. Well, that's not great. We definitely don't want to play this because we want to make it a 3-3. Definitely don't want to play this one. Because it could just... It is a 3-3 instead of a 7-7. Seven, seven is huge downside. Play out all of our lands. So Stinger Back Terror is as big as possible. And that's something we'll want to do over the course of the entire draft. Is just play out our lands so that Stinger Back Terror could be good. Classic 3-mana 7-7 seven, seven Flying Trample. No big deal. Pylons. Nice. That could be good. Oh, 
Oh, brutality. Oh my gosh, the devastation. I'm going to play this now. And I'm going to ditch their 5-5. Five five. Mostly because I don't want them to, like, have a punch spell, like, a to kill my stinger back. Gosh, that bounce spell is pretty dang good against this guy. Luckily, I'm still drawing a bunch of extra cards every turn. Yes, we get the victory! The stinger back terror! Oh my gosh. Let's go. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. We get to see how good Collector's Cage is. Our opponent says hello. We're not going to say hello back because uh, we want to psych them out. Psychological warfare and all that good stuff. I like to lead with my mana dork so I can have more options for the following turn. Naturalist. Sure, sure. So I want to be able to get that going. So if I play... Cage and activate... No, that's not very good. I can play Holy Cow here. play Sentinel. I think I'm going to play Holy Cow. And then next turn I can play Collector's Cage, activate it, and play Outlaw Medic. This is a tough choice, though. Yeah, I want that. That card's great. So I have five mana here, so I can go this. <laughs> I don't want any of these cards. They're all useless. Free cards do not play well with playing free. Oh, right. My guy has haste. I forgot about that. Oh, he doesn't have haste. I, I flashed him in on their end step. Wait, did I? I guess I did. I'll let them get an extra one one. <laughs> Not having a spell under this is such a bummer. I mean, I still get to play the land. Yep. Hmm. I'll see what I see off this first before I make any big decisions. Okay, I think I will exile this.
plot this, and then I'll probably sacrifice a land. Oh, this has to tap to sack a land. Oko, okay. If I knew I was going to play the Stinger back, maybe I shouldn't have done this. I should just play the land out of my hand. This thing can kill Oko, which is lucky. Oko saying, would you like to see a magic trick, is dark to me. Oh, we got him out of here. Let's go. And we drew a card. So good. And we gained four life. No big deal. Okay, Pylon's looking pretty good here, unironically. Do not want that. Hmm. I guess I could have done both these things last turn, but I'm glad I saved this guy to kill the Oko now. Um. Let's see what we draw off this before we make any big decisions. Okay, we'll make a three-three Prairie Dog. Oh, we're even going to get to get the counter on it here. I don't think we want to play the Armadillo because I think we'd rather just get the extra counter on this guy. So I could put a counter on my flyer or something. I'm one mana short of being able to activate this and use this. I think I'd rather go for this. Yep. This plus this is a nice combo. Ow, that wasn't very nice, opponent. Yep. So I could sacrifice a land here. I think I... I don't really want to. I want to keep this guy big. I'll keep that, no big deal. And then I'll add two counters to my prairie dog. <sighs> I think we're in good shape here. Okay. Can't be blocked by more than one creature, okay. Take three, six, ten. Sure. That's why I'm not a huge fan of the full steam ahead kind of game plan. Wait, they get trampled too. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, if I died to that, that would have been so embarrassing. Nice. Got the win. Welcome. I'm keeping, because I believe in the hand.
The gardener shall save me. I really just need one land. I've got medic to like but get by me some time. One land lets me play cow, even if Yeah, or gardener. I don't have any crime payoffs, just play the tap land. Also, it's only one of my two lands, so I have to play it pretty much. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Oh, that's actually really good. This will find me a land. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Just fair! <laughs> Sometimes it happens that way. Well, well, well. I'm probably going to lose this game now. Oh, Frontier Seeker. But is it too late? My current plan is get Spinewood's Armadillo into play ASAP. Yeah, this game's over. Sometimes it happens that way, though. I think it's going to let me done at sorcery, right? Nope. So here's my current plan. Try to survive. Play this next turn. Play a holy cow off of this. Gain two life. Actually, I might have to play the holy cow this turn. Just to have extra blockers. Because if I can survive and play this and then play this, I think I can win. Wow, that's actually huge for me. I'm going to have to chump this probably, but... Sure. Okay. They don't have any more creatures, so that's huge for me. I'm going to play this thing next turn, so I don't want to be able to put Holy Cow in. Actually, I think I just had to play Holy Cow here. I'll scry, see what I find. Sharpshooter. Okay, that's actually really good. I can use that to kill a stubborn burrow fiend in a turn or two. No blocks. I'll take nine, go to nine. That was a huge draw. I have a lot of life gain in the deck. Mm, 
no! Now I can't kill their guy. Oh, man. Oh, that's brutal. That is tough. Still alive. I expect they have more removal spells, probably, though. Beaver, sure. I'm happy if they make this attack. They probably have some trick to save the Sterling Supplier. Yeah, I can't beat that trick there. Ugh. That one was tough. I almost made a comeback after missing my land drops for too long. Oh well. Welcome! Gonna bounce back. Mesa can name green. This can get my red-white land. Sure. What is that? Okay, it's a 5-5, five, five, sure. Nice. Let's go bruise. You can do it, I believe. I believe in bruise, Tarl. Roven Rancher. Wow. I feel so lucky to have the opportunity to record videos with such awesome guests and to be like, wow, this person is awesome and really cool and really nice. And like, I don't know. I met them basically online playing Magic the Gathering, various things. And I've met them in person a couple times. So, so satisfying. <sighs> Life is good, Chad. I don't know why I say Chad. It's because I'm a... I've done so many Twitch streams that I'm just used to referring to viewers as chat. Yeah, that's fine. I don't mind. Bruce got me this guy. Ah! That was mean, opponent. Hmm. 
Sure, I'll get a free 3-3. Three, three. I don't want to deal with an army of flyers. And I think Lullaby killing their 5-5 five five will do wonders. It would be great to have drawn a land there. If I draw a single land, I can get the Nexus down. No blocks. My two four lifelinkers are actually going to grow and be able to double block this or things like that. Holds back this guy. No need to jump yet. And I have life gain in hand. They don't need that. I'm feeling good about my chances here. I'm going to be able to start putting more counters on the Medic. Got a couple more creatures. This thing's going to make me a 3-3. Three, three. I don't want a double block just yet. Because I can set things up for a single block. I'll just play this guy. And I can always flash this in or save it for the cage. Not cage, the... this thing. Sure. So if they have plus one, plus one, and indestructible, or snakes can be able to work out for me, and I gain six life, so. Yep. I'll play this just so I can just get a scry off here. Yep, that'll be good. I get a 3 3 here. Got double block on this guy. I guess this would be a better double block on that guy. I do want to chip in with a little bit of damage. Another beaver. So now I can go 4-4 four, th four, four, and 3-3 three, three on this guy, 3-3 three, three, and 3-3 three, three on this guy. So 
So this way they can only kill one of the desirable ones. I don't want to expose the Bedrock Sentinel. So this is why double blocking is so effective. Is because I just like mass. They traded a five five and a six six for a uh, four four and a three three. And now I have a huge stats advantage. Beautiful. I'll put this into play. I want to keep my two three threes up to block. Now I have two five fives. Tumbleweed, sure. Maybe I should have just made my prairie dog huge, but I like having two threats a lot of the time. So I think I like a mystical tether, I still have another blocker. Woo! Got the win. I wasn't going to play the Holy Cow. I was going to save it to just put it into play for free. Nice victory. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. Easy keep. I'm ashamed to say that I've been eating fried chicken between rounds. Which is why I'm chewing sometimes. I'm going to go for the long game play here. I'm just going to gain four life. Because it looks like they might be playing green-white. Where life gain really matters. So now I'm at a little bit of a life total buffer. Sure. That's a great draw. Gonna journey to nowhere the bighorn. Play Bandit. Play this guy. Gain one. I would have done more damage to them, I think, if I played the Alchemist. Just on turn two. But I like having a high life total here. Okay, so they don't want to attack. The longer I wait with this, the bigger the elemental is. I've also got holy cows to draw, which are really good with the scry. Because once you no longer need lands, scrying away a land is like drawing a card almost. Also, I'm not ashamed about eating fried chicken. I was just thinking about that. It was in my mind. I was like, why did I say I was ashamed to be eating fried chicken? I made it myself. Uh, it, it's really good. So, like, I know it's, it's like a... Really good breading. Oh, that's the ticket. Hmm.
I'm actually willing to make this trade. Normally, I wouldn't be willing to make a trade down like this. Okay, but they chump block anyway. Perfect. No, I'm so bad. I could have played the Prairie Dog too. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot about that. Oh my gosh. That could lose me the game. I'm going to attack like this. If they eat my 3-2, it means they have to chump one of my other guys. Gosh, I feel bad just because it would have been a sweet play to like use the hard bristle band that I'll remember for next time. If I'm fetching a crime land with a thingy, I get to untap it. Okay. Them being stuck on white mana has been pretty good for me. My green cards have really been doing good work. Sure. Well, that's nice. Just chipping away. Now I have two lethal threats. And one of them's a flying trampler. Hmm. Trained Erinx versus the world. Wow. Stingerback Terror was not allowed to live. But I won the war, so it's okay. <laughs> Woo! Rank up. See you folks next round. Welcome. We'll keep this. I'm not a coward. Nice. I'm actually going to ditch this to get rid of this guy now. Because it's going to do so much damage to me over the course of the game. And my mana is really constrained. I'm happy to trade this, even though Bruce Tarl is going to be good. I like give a double strike. I'm much happier to just keep the board clear and then win with my cards afterwards. I could have tried to set up the top of my deck. 
I'm happy to just let this go. Wow, Bruce Tarl always getting the cage. I love that. Cage, activate, throw from the saddle. I don't really want that. So they're gonna get play with something big, make a three one. I was hoping to get a two two. Okay. Hmm. I will give up on the one outlaw medic that I got. Goodbye, outlaw medic. No need to let them have a double block on my guy when I could just, like, make it a 5-5 five, five and attack them with it next turn. Let's go! Oh, another win. Our deck is sick! See you next round. Welcome to another round on the draw. Turn 3, Gardener. Uh-oh. Don't need my fifth florist. My fifth forest. I'm gonna just play the holy cow. Reason being, I think they might have like three mana deal four up and I don't wanna make let them use their mana efficiently here. Sure. I've already got another holy cow. I want to draw something better. Hmm. Well, this game's over. Not much I could have done about that one. That was bad. <laughs> that was a good curve out by them, and my deck did not have the right answers. Welcome! Easy keep here. Armadillo doing good work here, letting me keep a two-lander. I know I'll hit my third land drop at the very least. Also, Gardener doing work. Big fan of the old Gardener. 
I like gardening in general. I think the blasted thing's actually attracting more birds. But all the same, the gardens never looked better. I just love gardening. I used to garden. I would just go weeding. It's so satisfying. Very satisfying to weed. Weed a garden. I'm just going to keep this. Playing it is so much better than... Nothing. They can deserts do this, but I'm okay with that. Sure. I will Longhorn Sharpshooter it. If I draw land, I can just jam the Armadillo. If I don't, I can play this or see what I draw. Sure. I've got a good double block lined up. Shepherd of the Clouds. Well, that's pretty good. I'll keep that on top of it for now. They might be able to grind me out if I don't find my uh, my card advantage engine or my plus one plus one counter engine. Because they've gotten two for one, two for one. Actually, this was a three for one because they also drew the card. They played this and this and the other thing. And I got one two for one, so... Red Rock, okay. Yep, that seems good to me. Hmm. I want to get the desert to ping them, but I don't think it matters enough to be worth the one point of damage of not casting Journey to Nowhere and getting an attack in next turn. Okay.
have to get rid of Baron. The combo with the Bedrock Sentinel is too good otherwise. Or that. I just want to draw another card. The Outlaw Medic's not doing much for me. I'd be happy trading this guy for these two or for this one. I have a better board state right now, but they have more card advantage, so I have to try and leverage my board state to maybe get some good virtual card advantage by making good trades for me or doing a lot of damage to them. Nice, got him some damage, gained a life. They're never going to make an attack on me that Outlaw Medic does much. Sure. Time to get frisky. I will miss the armadillo if it dies, but that's how it goes. You got to get aggressive in these spots before their merriment can take over. Because currently I have the advantage, but if I wait, then they'll have the advantage. Oh. I'd love to kill their flyer if they let me. If they have plus two plus oh, bring a thing back, it's going to be... Yeah. Oh, never mind. They don't have anything in the graveyard to get back anyway. Gosh, this shepherd is such a problem. That is the power of double blocking, and also the fact that I didn't have any instant speed stuff to blow them out.
probably better than an average draw. I think I'm just going to do this. So I guess this doesn't play around anything because if they have plus one plus one protect their guy, I lose anyway. I should have just gone for the more ambitious block last turn. I should have played flashed in my guy, double block the 5-4, and then block 3-3 three, three, and 3-2 three, on this guy. It'd be the same situation, except I would have one less holy cow and they wouldn't have this guy. Yep. This is really good for me. Because this thing doesn't do much here. I have a 6-6 six, six blocker still. Which I guess, if they kill it, I'm in a little bit worse shape. Hmm. <laughs> But now I've gotten rid of their card advantage a little bit. And I have a 2-2, two -two, a lane for my 2-2 two -two flyer to attack them. Okay, sure. Oh, devastating. Oh, that's just wrong. Ooh, ouch. That's really bad. Wow, they really timed that one perfectly. As soon as I have a one-toughness guy, that's when they get the... No, I'm just kidding. They were going to get it eventually. It uh, would not have mattered. This game is so brutal. They have so much value. This thing getting back, this thing getting back, this thing is so bad. Yeah, I needed to draw one of my two really good cards, and I did not. If I draw my Collector's Cage in, and I can hide away the other guy, I could still have a shot. Losing Bruce Tarl hurts, though.
If I had my, like, card draw thing going this whole time, I think I could have gotten there. Oh, come on. Yep, I can concede with peace, knowing I did my best. Like, this game is completely different if I draw a Red Rock Sentinel, or if I draw a, um, if I draw a Red Rock Sentinel, or my six mana play, or my two mana play to put counters on everything, but they got a bunch of value engines going, and I just didn't draw one in my top half. Which is fine, it happens. But yeah, five and three, not a bad record for a pretty solid deck. I hope you enjoyed. If you didn't make it all the way to the end of the video, in the comments section down below, leave hashtag, um, I really wanna do something with Bruce Tarl always finding the collector's cage. So hashtag, um, <laughs> roving collect leave hashtag roving collector to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video because bruce darl had a real fond tendency of finding that collector's cage huge shout out to alex for coming on as a guest be sure to check out the limited level ups podcast the youtube channel and his twitch stream which is called cord o calls um there'll be links to all those in the description down below but that's gonna do it for this one i hope you enjoyed it and i will talk to you next time